Welcome to our ongoing series of videos based on structural analysis from Chapter 3. This is from Section 2, and this is our first video uh, from this section. We're calling this Video A, and we're dealing with equilibrium. We're all familiar with Newton's law that F is equal to MA. And more specifically, we should be explicit and say that the sum of all the external forces on an object, or alternately, we call that the net force on the object, is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. In our terminology, we would say the sum of all the external forces as the sum of P is equal to MA. And again, this is this annoying terminology issue that P stands for point force, and it's the standard terminology in almost every textbook on structures. So, um, we have two kinds of motion that can occur with an object. One is a translational motion and there is an acceleration A associated with that, and this is a vector quantity. Um, and then there's a rotational acceleration, which actually in the full mathematical sense is also a vector quantity, um, and that vector is much more subtle and difficult to understand. Fortunately, in our case, we don't have to worry about that because all of our mathematics is going to simplify down tremendously, and by that I mean that almost everything we design in architecture is assumed not to move. Now, in the future that may change. We may have parts of buildings that are very kinetic, which would be advantageous for energy balance and things of that sort, or energy management. Um, but for the moment, we're going to focus on structures that don't move. So we don't have to worry about acceleration and things of that sort. We're going to say the translational acceleration is zero and the angular acceleration is zero. So the generalized conditions of equilibrium are that the sum of all the external forces is equal to zero because we don't want the object or the building to accelerate. And likewise, the sum of all the external moments has to be zero because we don't want the building to start rotating. So when we say the sum of the external forces is equal to zero, what we're really saying is the net force or resultant force is equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> in order for a vector force to be zero, all of its components must be zero. In other words, the x component of the resultant force has to be zero, the y component has to be zero, and the z component has to be zero. So all of a sudden, what seemed tremendously complex and dealing with all kinds of vectors actually reduces down to things that are pretty simple because we take y as the upward force or the vertical direction. So examples of y forces are gravity and wind suction up on the top of, say, a flat roof. Um, X forces would be the horizontal forces of wind and seismic effects. And, and then Z, of course, would also be wind and seismic effects. Now, here's a point that I, I need to make, by the way. Uh, most of you will be working in CAD programs where Z is the upward axis. Um, and that's because as building designers, you start by drawing plans. And so you draw in the XY plane, and then you project your building up in the Z direction. In the world of structural analysis, we have a different tradition. The first structural analysis was done dealing with frames um, that existed in vertical planes. So there were... Uh, vertical forces and horizontal forces, and the first structural analysis was set up as two-dimensional structural analysis with the vertical axis being Y and the horizontal being X. 
So when they took the structural analysis and extended it to the third dimension, they made Z a horizontal dimension. Now, you may find that a bit annoying, but the structural analysis people have been doing this quite a bit longer than the CAD people have been doing it. So the CAD people were the ones who chose to break with this tradition. It's not a horrible problem, it's just something you have to keep track of that in our structural analysis programs, the Y direction is the vertical direction. And by the way, you can create a program in CAD and bring it into a structural analysis program and your building will be lying on its side. So the first thing you have to do is rotate it in, in a sense to interchange the Z and Y axis. And likewise, if you create something in a structural analysis program and you bring it into a CAD program, uh, you have to rotate it just in the opposite direction. <coughs> All right, so the um, X component of the resultant is just the sum of all the X components of all the, the uh, various forces that might exist on the object. So if there are N forces, we take the X component of the first force, the X component of the second force, and so forth, and that gives us the resultant. And likewise, the Y component of the resultant force is going to be the Y component of the first force plus the Y component of the second force, and so forth, down to the Y component of the nth force. And we write a similar equation for Z. Now, we've said this is zero, that's zero, that's zero. So in other words, the sum of all these X components has to be zero, the sum of all the Y components has to be zero, and so forth. So we write that this way. So these are very powerful and simplified equations that we can apply directly to solve problems. Where life would get really complicated is when we deal with something like, a, say, a geodesic dome or a structure like uh, Frank Erie might produce, which has uh, complex triangulated uh, networks of struts and members. Um, those members are not all vertical and horizontal. Um, and so the simplicity of these equations that might apply to a building with vertical columns and horizontal floor beams and a flat roof with horizontal trusses or beams, um, the simplicity uh, gets lost on a more complex structure. And that's why we typically do more complex structures. Uh, we do the structural analysis in a computer which takes care of all those uh, geometric complexities. But basically these are the equations and we solve these equations uh, in a computer and we might have a structure with a hundred thousand members and we may have several hundreds of thousands of equations which basically in one form or another are these kinds of equations and those simultaneous equations can be solved by the computer. And most of you took algebra and you know, you remember how irritating it was to have to solve three simultaneous equations. Well, imagine what it would be like to solve a hundred thousand of them. Well, we have software which on your computer uh, can solve a hundred thousand equations in just a matter of a few seconds and give you very complex information. So, those were all the equations related to translational equilibrium. Now we have a similar set of equations related to rotational equilibrium. The sum of all the external moments on any structure or any subset of the structure has to be equal to zero, which is equivalent to saying the resultant moment is equal to zero which is equivalent to saying the X component of the resultant moment is zero, the Y component of the resultant moment is zero, and the Z component of the resultant moment is zero. The X component of the resultant moment is the X component of the first moment plus the X component of the second moment 
plus the x component of the third moment, and so forth. And likewise for all the y moments, and likewise for all the z moments. So we can summarize this by saying that the sum of all the x components of all the constituent moments that are being summed together has to be equal to zero. And likewise, the sum of all the y components of all the constituent moments has to be equal to zero. And the sum of all the z components of all the constituent moments has to be equal to zero. So, for planar force systems, we can actually simplify our lives. In other words, we don't have six equations, which is the x components of <clears throat> the p forces, the y components of the p forces, the z components of the p forces, the x, y, and z components of the moments. Instead, if we're going to focus on planar systems, which is what we're going to do in this class, because three-dimensional systems just get too messy and bogged down, and they're not crucial to getting across the crucial structural issues. So as a consequence, we're going to throw out all the z-forces. In other words, we're going to deal only with vertical y-forces and horizontal x-forces, and we're going to ignore the forces in the third direction, because we have lots of structural systems that we can study and understand without ever addressing that force in the third dimension. That means we can actually throw out any moments about the x-axis or any moments that might tend to occur about the y-axis <clears throat> because all our forces are in the x-y plane and any of those forces when projected will tend to either go through the x-axis or the y-axis but they won't tend to have any lever arm relative to creating rotation about those axes. So in other words, we are left with the sum of all the x forces is equal to zero, the sum of all the y forces is equal to zero, and the sum of all the moments tending to produce rotation about the z-axis is zero. The z moments are the only ones we have left to be worried about because the z-axis is the only axis about which any moment will tend to be produced by either an x or a y force. So for simplicity our equations come down to the sum of the px forces is zero, the sum of the py forces is zero, and the sum of the moments is equal to zero. And for most of you this actually will be fairly intuitive if you stop and think about it. We can't have any net force in the x direction, we can't have any net force in the y direction, and we can't have a tendency to rotate about any axis perpendicular to the xy plane. Pretty simple. All right. We simplify this further, actually. We go back, you'll notice we explicitly said z here, but we're going to drop that z because we sort of understand that it's about a z axis. And since that's the only kind of moment we're dealing with anyway, we're going to simplify it to the sum of the px, the sum of the py, and the sum of the moments, with it being understood that there is a z here. Uh, but since we all understand that, we're not going to bother repeating that letter over and over again. The equation sum of the px equals zero can only be used to solve for x forces since only x-forces would appear in that equation. The equation sum of the py-forces is equal to zero can only be used to solve for y-forces since only y-forces would appear in that equation. The equation sum of the moments is equal to zero can be used to solve for x-forces and y-forces since both x-forces and y-forces can create moments about the z-axis and therefore both x-forces and y-forces could appear in the z-moment equation. It may also be used to solve for an unknown moment. 
and which we solve for will depend on what point we pick, but also what kind of information we really need to gather. So depending on the nature of the support system, the equations can be used to solve for any of the following combinations. 1x force and 2y forces, or 2x forces and 1y force, or 1x force, 1y force, and 1 moment. It is not possible to use this set of equations to solve for 3y forces since there are only two equations that can be used to solve for y forces and 3y forces exceeds by 1 the number of unknowns that can be determined based on two equations. Additional information in the form of another equation must be generated to solve for the third y force. By similar reasoning, it's not possible to use the equations above to solve for 3x forces. We have other equations that we use that have to do with the stiffness of the structure and deformation in the structure. And those equations tend to be quite complex and we won't tend to address them in any mathematical detail, but you should be aware that those equations are automatically addressed in computerized structural analysis and the relative stiffness of various stress paths is automatically accounted for. So for example, if we have two members that are cross bracing a given bay of a truss, for example, or a square bay, a rectangular bay in a high-rise building frame, the relative stiffnesses of those two bracing elements will be accounted for. And that provides us with the additional information that we need. So that kind of stiffness analysis can be done. We're not going to get into it in much depth though. We're going to tend to focus on what we call deterministic systems that can be solved by the equations of equilibrium. And those equations for the purposes of this class are the sum of the x-forces is zero, the sum of the y-forces is zero, and the sum of the moments about the z-axis or about a z-axis is equal to zero. That ends our discussion of equilibrium.